In this video, we're going to discuss Lewis structures as ways to represent covalent bonding in molecules. We are also going to talk about polyatomic ions and the covalent bonds that make up polyatomic ions, and they have an overall ionic charge. And we will talk about exceptions to the octet rule. Lewis structures are sometimes called electron dot structures. Lewis structures give credit to the scientists who um, developed this technique to represent bonding in molecules in a, a two-dimensional way. Um, not all molecules are flat, such as on a board or on a piece of paper. Some are, but a lot aren't. But this is a way to show the bonding between atoms in a molecule, molecule and or to show the lone pairs of electrons which are non-bonding around an atom. When we talk about bonding, we are talking exclusively about the valence electrons. The valence electrons are the electrons that are involved in bonding, whether it's ionic bonding or covalent bonding, it's the valence electrons that participate in bonding. But not all of the valence electrons may participate in bonding, and therefore they would be represented as the lone pairs or the non-bonding electrons. As we've already said repeatedly, covalent bonds are a sharing of electrons between two atoms. When you have two electrons or one pair of electrons that are shared, a single bond forms. When you have four electrons or two pairs of electrons, you have double bonds. And when you have six electrons or three pairs, that would be a triple bond. Really should have that. Okay, let's now go through some general rules of how to construct uh, Lewis structures. I'm going to show the rules and then I'm going to go through examples of going through the rules to draw Lewis structures. Some general rules for drawing Lewis structures. We're going to go through and then we're going to do examples following these rules. Let's go through the rules. We have a molecule that we want to draw the Lewis structure for. We need to initially determine the central atom, the one that appears once in the formula, or carbon. Hydrogen is never the central atom. Never. Hydrogen. Never the central atom. Okay? So I want to put that out up front. Okay? You sometimes may have two carbons, three carbons, multiple carbons with organic compounds. Carbon forms the backbone, central atom. Okay? After you determine the central atom, okay, <clears throat> if it's something other than carbon, place the other atoms adjacent around the central atom. Then we're going to consult the periodic table, determine how many valence electrons each of those atoms have, and draw them around each atom. So we'll draw electron uh, dot symbols with the valence electrons around each atom. We will refer to our periodic table to see which group the element is in. Okay. Hydrogen's in group 1A, one valence electron. Carbon is in group 4A, four valence electrons. Nitrogen's in 5A, five valence electrons, and so forth. We'll refer to our periodic table for the valence electrons. Remember, they are the ones involved in bonding. They are the ones we care about, the valence electrons. If we have a polyatomic ion, we're going to need to take an extra step when it comes to the valence electrons. If it's a polyatomic cation, such as ammonium or hydronium, we're going to subtract the charge value from the central atom's valence electron. Remember, if it's a cation, it loses electrons. So if you have a polyatomic cation, you have covalent bonds within the ion, but it has an overall charge that it transfers or, or gains when it actually bonds. So luckily, we only have two... Um, we don't have too many um, polyatomic cations, 
So we would subtract whatever that charge is. If it's a plus one charge, we would remove one valence electron from the central atom, okay? For polyatomic anions, there are many polyatomic anions. Anions gain electrons. So if we are drawing the Lewis structure for a polyatomic anion, we are going to add the charge value from the central atoms, uh, add it to, I'm sorry, not from. We will add the charge value to the central atoms valence electrons. So if we have a polyatomic anion that has a charge of minus two, then we would add two electrons to the central atoms count. Right? And we're going to see these in examples. When you have a polyatomic ion, you would use a bracket, square bracket, and the overall charge of that polyatomic ion outside in the top right-hand corner, which we are going to see. So once we have the central atom identified, the adjacent atoms identified, and the valence electrons drawn out, now it's time to make the bonds. Two electrons equal one single bond, okay? After we draw the single bonds, <clears throat> we need to check for the octet rule where applicable. Note exceptions. Right now, the only exception I'm gonna tell you about is hydrogen. Hydrogen will only have two electrons around it, has one valence electron, it can only make one bond. We're gonna talk about other exceptions in a little bit, okay? Right now, we're just gonna talk about use hydrogen. So we want to check that all of the atoms have an octet around them. Does carbon have eight electrons around it? Does nitrogen have it? Does oxygen? Okay, remember we're focusing on the nonmetals here with covalent bonding. If the octet rule is not satisfied, and it should be, carbon should have eight electrons around it. Oxygen should have eight electrons around it. If it's not satisfying the octet rule, and it should, then we need to draw double or triple bonds. We need to have more electrons shared between those atoms, okay? We're gonna do several examples now of utilizing these rules, okay? And then we are going to talk about some other exceptions to the octet rule to conclude um, at the conclusion of the video. Okay, so let's do examples. We're going to refer back to these rules. You can, you can do the rewind button um, if you need to, but I'm going to go through several examples of drawing Lewis structures. We're going to start off with a pretty easy example. Draw the Lewis structure for CH4, which is methane. Okay, methane is um, in natural gas. If, you, if your home is heated with... Um, uh, PGW supply, it is methane natural gas coming through. Let's draw the Lewis structure for this molecule. Rule number one says to identify the central atom. The central atom appears once in the formula or carbon. In this case, it's both. It appears once and it is carbon. The central atom. Draw the adjacent atoms around it. Well, we have four hydrogen atoms. So we want to fan those four hydrogen atoms around the carbon, okay? Now, you say, well, what if I put the hydrogens here? What if I made it like a square? That's fine, because in actuality, the molecule isn't really flat, and it doesn't, this is just a two-dimensional representation. So you have the hydrogen atoms fanned around the carbon atom. Okay, so we have central atom, and we have adjacent atom. Now we need to draw the valence electrons. So we look at the periodic table. We find hydrogen. Hydrogen's in group 1A, one valence electron. We find carbon. Carbon is in group 4A, four valence electrons. We only care about the valence electrons, okay? So one valence electron, one valence electron, one valence electron, one valence electron. Carbon has four, one, two, three, four. It's good to use pencil when you're doing these in case you need to make uh, changes. Okay, so the next rule is to um, draw the bonds. Two electrons form one bond. Okay, so in this example, we can show it by connecting the dots. Sometimes it's shown by just um, circling the dots. Okay. We have no, ex we have, we haven't, um, Carbon and hydrogen here, okay. Um, we drew the bonds. 
Now we need to check that the octet rule is satisfied for those atoms that follow it. Hydrogen, like I said just a few moments ago, hydrogen is an exception to the octet rule. Hydrogen will only have two electrons around itself because of the one balance electron it has to form one bond. So hydrogen is only going to have two electrons. That's an exception. Let's check carbon. Carbon should have eight electrons. Two, four, six, eight. Remember, one bond is equivalent to two electrons. So the octet rule is satisfied for carbon. Okay? And that is done. That is the Lewis structure for methane. I just want to point out, too, I had written up the rule, general rules for drawing Lewis structures, and I know that textbooks vary in how they present that information. And maybe you have had chemistry before, and you learned a different way to count up the total electrons and place them around, and, you know, whichever way works for you is fine. But the one thing, and which is why I don't teach it that way, is because sometimes with those other techniques, people neglect to remember that it's the valence electrons that participate in bonding. And they start, have, they have, you know, 24 electrons to put up and they just don't know where to put them. So if you remember, if you, if you go step by step and you remember that it's the valence electrons, you, that's what keeps it, that's what bonds. So that's why I tried, I, I show it this way and I explain it this way, which is a little bit different than some textbooks show um, in the way that it's presented. Either way is fine, but just remember that it's the valence electrons that participate in bonding, okay? So I'm going to continue to show the way that I had written up with the general rules for drawing Lewis structures so that you can um, concentrate on the valence electrons. This one is pretty easy, okay? Let's look at another example. Carbon dioxide. Let's do the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide, example two. Okay. Carbon dioxide is a um, product of a combustion reaction. Okay. First rule is to identify the central atom, carbon. It appears once in the formula, and it's the central atom the adjacent atoms around it. All right, I have two oxygens, so I'll put one here and one here. If you drew one up here, one down there, it's fine, okay? But remember that molecules like to be stable, they like to be symmetrical. We'll talk about shapes of molecules in um, chapter 10, okay? So this is just to draw the two-dimensional Lewis structures and to get those rules down here. We have the central atom, and we have the adjacent atoms. Now, let's put the valence electrons on each atom. Carbon is in group 4A of the periodic table. It has four valence electrons. Now, if you're sitting there and you're like, where are you getting that from? Okay, 4A. You say, well, carbon has six electrons. Yes, but we don't, only four of them participate in bonding. Only the valence electrons. So, four valence electrons for carbon. Oxygen is in group 6A. Six valence electrons. That's what we care about. That, those are the electrons that could participate in bonding. We don't care about the total eight. We just focus on the valence electrons. All right, carbon's in group 4A of the periodic table. Oxygen is in group 6A. So I'm going to draw the valence electrons around each atom. Okay. We go down to the general rules for drawing Lewis structures, and the next rule says to draw the bonds. Okay, two electrons form a single bond. So let's draw a bond right here. Let's draw a bond right there. Okay, let's check now for the octet rule, that the octet rule is satisfied. We don't have hydrogen here, so we don't have any exceptions. Everything should follow eight electrons around it. Let's count. Let's look at carbon first, okay? Remember, one bond 
counts as two electrons. So carbon, two, four, five, six. No octet. Let's look at oxygen. Two, four, this bond is six, and that one by itself is seven. No octet. Two, four, six, seven. No octet. All right, well, they should follow the octet rule. So now we need to go to the um, last rule and utilize double or triple bonds. So this is where I say it's best to use a pencil. Now, this electron over here is not stuck over there, okay? Remember, the electrons are around the atom. It's not saying that it's in that distinct spot right there. So I'm just going to redraw that electron, and I'm going to put it there. And same thing on this oxygen here. I'm going to take that electron, and I'm just going to put it over there, okay? Remember, the electrons are around. They're not in that distinct spot as drawn on the paper or on the board. I'm also going to take these two electrons that are around carbon, and I'm just going to draw them in a different spot. I'm going to take this one that's up here at the top, and I'm going to put it there. And this one that's over here, I'm just going to put it over there on that side. Okay, remember, the electrons are around, not in the distinct spot where you put the dot. Okay, let's try a double bond and see if the octet rule is satisfied with double bonds. Share share. Okay, let's now check that the octet rule is satisfied. Let's start with our central atom. Carbon has four bonds around it. One bond makes two electrons, so two, four electrons, six, eight electrons. We now have eight electrons around carbon. Good, octet rule is satisfied for carbon. Let's check our oxygens Okay, we have on this oxygen here, two, four electrons, six with this lone pair, eight with that lone pair. We have eight electrons around oxygen. We have the identical setup over here, two, four, six, eight. Ta-da! We have the structure for carbon dioxide. Okay. Now, what if we have a polyatomic ion? Okay, we still follow these same rules, but we have to take into account the charge on that overall ion. Let's draw the Lewis structure for the ammonium ion. So the ammonium ion has an overall plus one charge. We still need to do the regular steps that we do before we draw valence electrons. The only thing we're going to do different now is the electrons, um, the valence electrons on the central atom are going to be altered, and our overall structure in the end will have a bracket. But let's start from rule number one. Identify the central atom. Nitrogen appears once in the formula. Nitrogen is the central atom. We have four adjacent atoms of hydrogen. Let's draw those four adjacent atoms of hydrogen around the nitrogen. Okay. How many valence electrons? That's the third rule. Well, hydrogen has one valence electron. Okay. Nitrogen is in group 5A of the periodic table. So nitrogen, right here, has five valence electrons. But because we have this overall plus one charge, we need to subtract one of those five from the central atom. So nitrogen has five valence electrons. Subtract one for a total of four valence electrons. So now we're going to draw nitrogen with four valence electrons because of that plus charge, okay? So that's the only thing that we have done differently from the other two examples.
Now we need to draw the bonds and check for uh, the octet rule to be satisfied. Single bond, single bond, single bond, single bond. Okay. Let's check that we have an octet around nitrogen. Two, four, six, eight electrons around nitrogen. Hydrogen is only going to have two electrons. Remember, hydrogen is an octet rule exception. And that's the only one that we have mentioned up to this point. So octet rule is satisfied where it should be. Now, because it's a polyatomic ion, we need to draw square brackets around the Lewis structure and put a plus charge outside of it, okay? If this were a different charge, we would then put that respective charge in that same location, okay? Don't forget brackets and charge. Okay, so that's an example of a Lewis structure for a polyatomic cation. Okay, let's do a Lewis structure for a polyatomic anion. Let's draw the Lewis structure for the polyatomic ion iodate. Okay, so the iodate ion, I'm sorry, not iodate, periodate, sorry, periodate, sorry, wrong ion, wrong name, forgive me. Okay, let's draw the Lewis structure for periodate. Okay, so we have an anion here, and the anion is going to gain an overall one electron, okay? But we have covalent bonding here, okay? The, I, the iodine and the oxygen are covalently bonded with each other. Let's draw the Lewis structure. Central atom is iodine. Adjacent atoms, four oxygens. Let's draw the valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons. It's in group 6A. Iodine is a halogen, and it's in group 7A. So it has seven valence electrons. But because of the negative one charge, it's going to gain one electron to its overall valence. So iodine has seven valence electrons, but gains one in this ion for an overall eight valence electrons. Okay, so this minus charge here, we need to account for that. So now we're going to draw the eight valence electrons around iodine. Okay. All right. Now we need to draw the bonds. In the previous examples, we showed a sharing, uh, like a dot to dot, connect the dots. And the two electrons were shared between those atoms. Well, we're going to show that sharing a little bit differently here. See this? On this side, iodine is going to share that with oxygen to form a bond. See this? I'm going to share. 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 They're my single bonds. I'm not drawing them as a line. I drew them more as a, as a cloud, okay, as a space. Okay. We could represent that the same way, like this. Okay. We need to check for the octet rule. Each oxygen has eight ele electrons around it. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Iodine has eight around it. Two, four, six, eight. These electrons are shared between the oxygen and the iodine. We need the brackets 
with the overall charge. Okay, we don't want to forget the brackets. Okay. And we have the Lewis structure for the pariodate ion. In a textbook, you probably see it written like this here. Okay. Well, we only talked about one exception to the octet rule, that being hydrogen. We have some other common exceptions to the octet rule. We have some exceptions where we have less than eight electrons, and hydrogen is one of those. So hydrogen will not fill to an octet, it'll fill below with only two electrons around it. Boron is another atom that typically does not follow the octet rule um, unless it is in the form of a, of a polyatomic ion. But uh, traditionally, boron does not follow the octet rule. Some nitrogen-oxygen compounds um, do not follow the octet rule and have a, a, a radical uh, setup, so I'm going to show those. And then we have some electrons with uh, some um, Lewis structures with expanded octets in uh, contrast to incomplete octets. We have some uh, examples where phosphorus and sulfur can have an expanded octet and can go beyond eight electrons. Uh, phosphorus can have an expanded octet of 10 electrons. Sulfur can have an expanded octet of 12 electrons. And we're going to see some examples of exceptions to the octet rule next. Some common octet rule exceptions are discussed in section 9.9. Now, if you notice in this video, I did uh, sections in the order of 9.4, 9.5, 9.7, 9.7, 9.9. I wanted to keep all of the Lewis structure um, content together. So I don't really prefer how the author of the textbook explains this. I feel like there's a little bit jumping around. So I wanted to keep all of the um, octet, I'm sorry, all of the Lewis structure um, information together, which is why I have it presented this way in one video. So while we're talking about Lewis structures, there are some exceptions to this octet rule in covalent bonding. Incomplete octets, fewer than eight electrons. We've so far, I only mentioned hydrogen, okay, because it's, such, it's so common. Hydrogen only has two electrons around it. Boron, at most times, will only have six electrons around it. Here's an example of boron trifluoride. Boron is your central atom, three fluorines around it. You go to the periodic table to draw the valence electrons for boron, Boron has three valence electrons. Fluorine has seven valence electrons. You draw the bonds. Okay, you check for the octet. Fluorine has an octet. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. But boron will not have an octet and will only have six electrons around it. Two, four, six. So boron is an exception. Uh, to the octet rule. Sometimes boron will follow the octet rule when it's involved in uh, a polyatomic uh, ion, okay? Um, but most times it's below, okay? A bor boron with any halogen is going to be under the octet. Some other exceptions are some nitrogen oxygen compounds which form radicals. Radicals are very reactive, and when you go on to take organic chemistry, you spend a lot of time talking about radicals. Uh, so radicals, you have some odd electron group. Electrons either want to be in a bond with another electron, or they want to be in a lone pair with another electron. So when they're by themselves, they act crazy, okay? So um, one example here, okay, nitrogen monoxide. You have seven electrons around nitrogen. It forms this radical, and nitrogen... Uh, dioxide also forms a radical uh, around nitrogen. So you only have seven electrons around the nitrogen 
in these examples, okay? Um, and this is when nitrogen pairs with oxygen, not nitrogen with other atoms. So oxygen follows the octet rule, two, four, six, eight, but nitrogen will only have seven, two, four, six, seven. Okay, over here, two, four, six, eight around oxygen, two, four, six, eight around oxygen, but nitrogen, two, four, six, seven. So these are some instances when you have incomplete octets fewer than eight electrons. Now let's look at some examples where you have expanded octets greater than eight electrons. Two common examples of where we have an expanded octet occur with phosphorus and sulfur. Okay, when phosphorus and sulfur bond with a halogen, they tend to expand their octets. Okay, so for instance, when phosphorus um, bonds with five chlorines, okay, to form phosphorus pentachloride, okay. Let's look at that Lewis structure. Phosphorus is in group 5A of the periodic table, so five valence electrons. Chlorine is in group 7A of the periodic table, seven valence electrons. So what happens? Okay, you have sharing of electrons, covalent bonding. All right, and chlorine follows the octet rule. You have eight electrons around each individual chlorine. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, and so on for all five chlorines. And then you get to phosphorus, and you have two, four, six, eight, ten. You have 10 electrons around phosphorus when it bonds with a halogen. Okay, so you have this expanded octet. If we go over to sulfur bonding with a halogen, okay, so we have here sulfur hexafluoride. Okay, sulfur is in group 6A of the periodic table, so we will have six valence electrons for sulfur. Our halogen of fluorine will have seven valence electrons. Okay, so we form the bonds, single bond, single bond, single bond, single, single, single. Okay, the octet rule, now we need to check, is it satisfied for fluorine? Yes, two, four, six, eight electrons around each individual fluorine. But now sulfur has exceeded the octet, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons around sulfur. So phosphorus and sulfur can have expanded octets when bonding with halogens, okay? When we can draw lower structures, it helps us to predict the structure and eventually the reactivity of a molecule. There's a lot of stuff we know about how molecules behave, and there's a lot of molecules yet to be discovered and to be uh, studied. So knowing these basics help for future discoveries, okay? So th that's why we, we have these tools to learn and to see how these molecules are laid out, what their structures look like, and that helps us to see what they predict, what they can do or what they can't do.